I don't remember the first song I learned on guitar, but I do remember I was 15 when I learned ACDC's <laughs> Thunderstruck. Now, it's really fun to know those kind of songs, but who can sing like that, right? Like, I spent, I don't know how many times, trying to get my voice <laughs> uh, to where uh, I could sing high. And I, I remember there is a somewhere a cassette recording of me going uh, some folks are on me like I'm trying to be John Fogarty and I'm a baritone it's taken me <laughs> over 20 years of doing music to come to terms with the limitations of my voice and so if you're playing covers like me figure out what your range is and play to your strengths you can change the key you can change the key of the song and uh, it's gonna sound so much better so let's look at some top cover songs for me that I like to do and how I've changed the key to fit my voice and my range because I'll tell you what even if you can just you know barely do it well after you've been singing for three hours it's it's not gonna be as easy to hit those high notes so you know, if you're going to do some gigs, some acoustic gigs, uh, you need roughly 60 songs. You know, that's three minutes a piece on average, and that'll get you for three hours, which is, you know, if you're playing out, that's probably what you need is, you know, six, 60 songs or so in your repertoire. And so we're going to look at my top 10 and... Uh, why I think they work. Uh, you want to appeal to as many generations as possible, right? Like you want to know your audience. You want to be able to look out there and kind of read them and shift on the fly, especially if it's a solo gig. You can just change songs, right? Like you can just pull out your, your iPad, you have your lyrics, and you can just change it all up. And it'd be totally different than what you intended, but you read the room. I remember one time, I was playing at a fair, and there were Mumford and Sons was big at the time, and I was playing, uh, I forget which songs it was, you know, <laughs> some B sides, uh, but they were in this specific tuning. They were in open D, and so I played a couple of those, and the crowd was into it. They were singing along. It was awesome. It was a great time, and they shouted out "Little Lion Man" and uh rookie me i looked back at them and i said it, 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 in a minute in my mind i'm thinking ah oh, it's in a different tuning uh you know i gotta i gotta really take a break and and totally retune the guitar just for that one song so i didn't i went on to play something else and the crowd left <laughs> right like they might have left anyway there's i mean it's a crowd and there's teenagers you know it's a fair uh, there's rides who can compete with that but you need to know the audience and if they're wanting you to play something play it right like even if you have to retune your guitar uh, read the moment and play into that now a lot of current songs in this day and age oh it's it's exhausting right because they'll be popular for like two weeks and then people have forgotten about them so you need to find songs that have that staying power that really um you know become instant classics if you're gonna do new stuff another thing you know just do love songs right <laughs> like do things that people are gonna play at their their wedding it will remind them of their wedding it'll create some nostalgia for them and they'll sing along and they won't pay as much attention to how you get it right or how good you are they'll be in their mind back in that moment so yeah play into that read your audience Play to your strengths. Uh, those are that's my number one thing. So let's let's take a look. These are my top ten uh, ish songs here, uh, and so you can see "Sweet Caroline." I, I love to start with that because I mean, even if it's just you and acoustic guitar, like that that opening riff is recognizable and they're already in the moment with you. And then, I mean, it's just got that driving rhythm. Uh, it's, it's very singable um, 
whether you do it in the original key or a little bit, I do it just a little bit down. Uh, I mean, where it began, you know, they're, <laughs> they're in the moment with you. So that one's really fun. Uh, I like Amy by Pure Prairie League. I don't know if anybody seeks this song out on, uh, on Spotify, <clears throat> but it's easy on acoustic guitar. And then, you know, it's, it's catchy. It's, it's fun. It's catchy. It's upbeat. And so, uh, even though it's kind of an obscure band, uh, it fits my voice. It fits me. Well, I really like it. I was learning guitar when, when John Mayer was kind of big. So I'll always like to throw something in there. I live in Georgia. And so why Georgia works, um, you know, read your, read your crowd. If there's not that many, uh, millennials who, are going to be John Mayer fans, you might not need very much. I always try to throw some Beatles in there as much as I can. Here Comes the Sun, it, it fits my voice. I don't have to change anything. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, Beatles, uh, if you can do it well, uh, if you can do it justice, then always good to throw in there. Now, let's take this. This one's a hit. This one's fun. I mean, and again, the riff is opening, opening riff is recognizable. <laughs> Day after day, I'm more confused. I mean, you know, <laughs> and then the, the chorus, Give me the beat, boys, free my soul. I mean, everybody singing, singing along with you. You can clap to that one. That one's fun. But let me show you something. So on Ultimate Guitar, there's never been an easier time to be learning songs because Ultimate Guitar has so much stuff, and they have these official versions you can you can have to pay for it a little bit it's like 25 bucks a year or something but look look at this here's here's what i wish i had when i was 15 right like here's what really makes a difference so i go in i i click on it now i try to sing along with the radio in my car you know it sounds fine when i'm belting it out when i start to play it myself in the original key i might discover Ugh, that's that's a little high, right? Like I'm a baritone. <laughs> this is some professional singer who can hit super high notes. Now, look what you can do. So, uh, I've got the chords. These is this is the original key. Um, now, keep in mind these aren't perfect. Uh, there's a chord missing even from the second line. Like clearly, it goes. I look for the light through the pouring rain. There's a chord missing there, and this is the official version. But you know, whatever. Uh, it gets you close. Um, so original key, I can go to the vocals and it will show me uh, what the notes are, the melody. And what you need to do is learn your range, like your comfortable range. Now you got your reach notes where, you know, you can get some energy and just belt it out. But uh, like I said, if you're playing for three hours, especially if you know you have a full-time job, you've worked all day, and then you're going and playing somewhere that night. Like I was a teacher, and uh, I played a few gigs at a, the fair, and after you've been talking for eight hours, and then you go sing for three hours, uh, yeah, my range just wasn't there. So figure out your comfortable range, and look, uh, here's a G. <laughs> I. I can only sing a G on a very good day when I've got no phlegm and uh, it has to be the right syllable or it's just going to sound terrible. It's going to be strained. It's going to hurt me. It's going to hurt their ears. It's not going to work. But look what I can do. I can transpose this. I can bring it down. Uh, and it keeps coming down. And oh, look at that. Now. Now it's an E. That G is no longer a G. Uh, it's or G sharp, whatever it was. It's an it's an E. That's doable for me. And so finally, uh, I can I can sing this now, right? Uh, and so if I go back to the chords, uh, now the song is in G instead of E, and that high note is manageable and. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do. They're not gonna know. They're not gonna know 
that you're not doing it in the original key, as long as you're doing it well. Play to your strengths, right? Uh, and so this, this tool makes all the difference. Now what, what I like to do is, um, let's see if I can show you here, uh, there is an app you can get on your, on your iPad uh, called Pia Score, and you can attach that to your mic stand and go from there. On my computer, I like to use Four Score, uh, and you can see I can make set list here and uh, go into my covers. I can move them around. Uh, I can download those songs in the right key from Ultimate Guitar if I need to. Uh, rearrange them I can I can you know I can pull these up on the fly they're great for rehearsing learning things or like I said putting it on your iPad and and you've got that crutch there if you need it so if you get nervous and forget verse 3 <laughs> uh, then you're still you're good to go so I I really love those tools uh, so let's see let's look back what are some of the other songs that we had here um, so oh, where'd he go uh, also, if you're playing by yourself, they, they have backing tracks on here that uh, the default, it's uh, kind of MIDI uh, sounding, kind of artificial, but if you click on backing track, then it gives you a uh, more authentic sound. You can choose which instruments are in that. You can mute them here. and. You could have a, a backing track for a song that really needed more than just acoustic guitar. But anyway, that's a side note. All right, Jack and Diane, uh, there have been songs written about that song. <laughs> um, I mean, just... I mean, it's, it's groovy, it's fun, uh, it's kind of whimsical, but it's also existential. Uh, I, I love that one. Brown Eyed Girl, uh, you know, a lot of people have heard that on the radio um, all their life. And so that's that's a good one. Another another Beatles one there that's in my range, Take It Easy. Uh, these are, you know, just a few songs that I like to do. Uh, another one that I really had to, uh, you know, that's, I mean, you can do I'm Yours by Jace Mraz. That one's definitely in my top 10. Uh, and I mean, And again, the original is here. It's it's way it's in B. It's way too high for for me and my baritone voice. Um, let's see, where's the chorus? Uh, yeah, see, it, it gets up in there in that G area uh, and G sharp. And yeah, I can't I can't do that stuff. So. I just transpose it into G and oh, voila, I am ready to go uh, in a key that matches my voice. So that's a fun one. Uh, another one, let's see, what's, what's the title of that? Thinking Out Loud, like I'm doing right now. Uh, it's always great when there's the official version and once again, I go in, I look at this. He starts out in a nice doable range and he jumps an octave. And I can't I can't do it. I mean, it sits up there around that F sharp and the G and it's too much of a strain for me. I drop it down uh, to something that fits my voice. And now, you know, that one, it has that definite sort of vibe with the you know, the groove that's going on, but you can recreate that. So instead of going from D, you've got that, this is the original. I can switch it to G. I mean, the audience isn't gonna know that you've totally moved it <laughs> five steps or half steps or whatever it took to get it to your voice. All they're going to know is they recognize the song, you're doing it well, and that's all that, that really matters. So those are a few tips I have for preparing for, for gigs. Um, really, you know, you can 
do this, you can sing, but you got to play to your strengths. You got to know your limitations and, uh, you know, pick songs that, that people like, that, that you like. Uh, it's hard to find that perfect match, right? Between songs that people want to listen to and songs that you can do well and songs that you like and they like, it's hard to, to find that, right? But uh, if you do it well, it's not gonna matter so much whether they know it or not. Uh, it's not gonna matter if it's not in the original key. You've gotta do it where you can play it and sing it well and they'll be with you in that moment. So, hey, have fun, keep playing.